Blank Space is an impact strategy firm. I'm looking at how we're building impact and then how we're amplifying that. Prior to that, I was doing that work inside of some very big companies. So it's exciting to launch your own firm. Um, and that's been uh, over four years now and we continue to grow. Blank Space is really about that intersection of impact, culture, and capital. So how are we actually building businesses of the future um, and looking towards that blank space that we can all go to? I'm all about purpose. I uh, work with brands and uh, CEOs, leaders, foundations on their legacy and really what we can do to leave a positive impact on the world. So I spend my time um, really honing in on what authentic legacy means um, and really looking at business growth as a piece of that. So what are we doing as far as a business that is the do and the say? How are we making a difference in the world? And then how are we sharing that and our values um, with all those that we reach? I talk all day long to people about why legacy happens in, in the little moments right now and the decisions we make and the jobs that we do and the lives that we lead. Um, you know, it's always fun. And, and maybe this is a little bonus homework exercise for anybody who wants to, uh, after session, do something is write the obituary that you want to see. Um, and you start to think about your values and what you're doing and leaving behind in, in everything that you do. So legacy for me is something that is very much alive um, and really the, a big piece of the brand I run. I went to school at Penn State University and um, I was a triple major because I just like to be busy, I think. <laughs> But my main focus was on journalism. So I think I was just having this conversation with actually a journalist the other day that it is the root of, of so much good work in this world. And, and it's something that you take with you throughout. It helps you look at everything with an inquisitive eye, um, a lifelong learning, and, uh, and really being someone who behind the scenes can build strategy. You know, listening is a skill that not many people have in today's landscape, as you can see, it's a lot more yelling. So I am very much uh, excited about my journalism degree to this day. And, um, and in my career, I, you know, did that route for a while. And I um, actually wrote for the Irish Times in Dublin for a little while, lived abroad. Um, and then really was for me, it was always about storytelling as a way to move hearts and minds and and really make a difference. And so that eventually led me into, um, you know, looking at private sector engagement around those issues. And that's kind of a condensed version of a lot of things in between. I um, used to run a foundation for Dermalogica, the skincare brand years ago. Um, this is about eight, nine years ago. And working all over the world, to help women start and grow businesses um, and managing the whole, you know, corporate oversight of that. And you spend time on the ground and you build these relationships up. I mean, some of my relationships are 15, 20 years in the making. And so it really is just about being a lifelong learner and spending time getting to know other people's priorities and um, being really good at what you do and being able to, you know, walk through those doors when they open to, um, you know, advise on that level, but it does not happen overnight. <laughs> um, I was hired by Weight Watchers, uh, which is known as WW, um, which many of us have known for a long time. And they did a whole rebranding uh, a couple of years ago which is exciting. And they had a lot of new people at the home, um, people we know really well, like Oprah, thinking about how they're revitalizing the brand and moving it forward. Uh, so when I came in to work on their brand purpose, it became very clear to me that if we were to do something that was just WW, it wouldn't be big enough. If we were to do something that was just um, a partnership, let's say, with food banks and making sure that you know, their platform about living well and making sure that um, other communities were able to live well and, and had access to um, healthy foods. 
which in essence was where, you know, the conversation started, it wouldn't be big enough because WW is a platform of transformation and it's a community and it has brands from all over the world that are on there that you're tracking and you're, you know, the nutritional value and that are promoting wellness. So when I presented to them the idea that they actually needed to do something that was more in line with who they were, um, this is also a brand that's about membership and, and meeting and coming together and group work. So taking that and combining it to build a huge coalition, um, the largest uh, brand coalition around this called the Healthy Living Coalition. And we have in it everyone from JP Morgan, B of A, Impossible, Beyond Meat, um, so competitors in the marketplace, um, people not even in the food uh, industry directly really coming together to change and transform food systems. I've always made, been value aligned um, in, in my decisions in my career. I uh, less left company um, that didn't meet my values. I didn't want to be making an income and receiving that um, from that. So for me, value alignment has always been a core of my decisions and livelihood, which is why I eventually became an entrepreneur because it gave me the most control over those things. Um, but uh, helping to move people into the future and make their companies better. The most important thing is the leadership at the top, because you could have the best programs and the best people, but if the person at the top isn't actually making this a priority and driving the company around it, um, then you'll always be in a friction kind of a, a place. So as long as I'm sitting down with a CEO that is completely like authentically, like, let's do this, then yeah, I'm on board. Branding in the macro is who you are as a company, right? That's what we were, what's part of my presentation around the voice and the identity and what you stand for and what you do. Um, it's, it's having a little bit of control over that. If you don't have a strong brand, it's very easy to see because you end up um, looking a lot like your competition or people are confused by what you're giving um, early in early days and with entrepreneurs. So I've done a lot of venture work. You have conversations with entrepreneurs that don't have the strong elevator pitch because they haven't done the brand work and they don't know who they are. And they're trying to be everything to everybody. So your brand is, is you, is the company, is um, it's kind of everything. And I think that sometimes it gets mistaken as like uh, extra output. And that's more of like how you're marketing it, not the actual brand. America is having a moment where some of its values um, that most people stopped on the street of all walks of life, of all ages, of all backgrounds, of all ethnicities, of all cities in this country would say these are like the top American values. Things like, you know, uh, coming here to create a better life and having an opportunity for your family and education to move forward. That's something that most people um, put on. I mean, we have the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island is that, and, and now today there's so many different versions of what that means. Um, and it kind of doesn't exist anymore in the way it does and not to get too political on it, but this is stuff that really matters because then you look at other countries' value prop propositions, if we're, if we're thinking about this from a brand standpoint, and I'll use those words, other countries' value propositions based on the values that we attribute to America, there's actually better options. Mm -hmm. Listening. They need to do like a national listening tour and figure this out. <laughs> I was in Unilever and I was working across um, the brands in the prestige portfolio. And I started to work with all the founders post MA, um, helping them set up their second chapters. So, you know, what does their brand look like as far as becoming part of Unilever and starting their family foundations and their investment portfolio and their impact, their legacy? It was the beginning of my legacy business. And, uh, 
I have been working with Yuli for a very long time and they, um, I'm very lucky to say, uh, put the gas in the tank and help me launch my business. So uh, I have encouraged other folks who are inside and, and, and doing well inside, but are thinking about, you know, what that could be like, um, you know, to not be afraid of, of those conversations. I was really lucky because what I built was so unique of a value that that was helpful for them for, for me to build my business too. So I was very lucky in the fact that I started my business with a very big multinational um, um, as as my first client. Mm, without an agenda. I think the biggest mistake people make in networking is that they're running around giving people business cards and no one cares, really. <laughs> I spend time making really good friends and Listening again, I can't emphasize it enough. Um, and getting to know what people are working on and where your your paths may cross and things that you can send them that could be interesting. And you start to build relationships over many, many years. Um, and I really recommend that to look at it as, you know, I always say don't do business with someone you don't want to have dinner with. <laughs> like if they're so terrible that you don't want to have dinner with them, then like why, why, like why would you want to do business with them? So <laughs> say that, and that's how you should approach net networking. Like be your authentic self, connect with people on that level, um, dive into what their values are, why they're doing their job, and get to know them. And that matters and you end up building friendships which are a lot stronger so it really depends on the company because some companies have spent so much time doing deep research and that's what they're presenting me with is their pain point so that happens a lot especially with the big companies like the big multinationals have so much funding that they're giving to research and analytics around their target audiences um some companies don't make the connection to that though. And so you need to ask for it. On, on our side, the work that I usually bring to the table involves what's happening outside of their purview. So they'll sit down and give me the data on, okay, this is what's happening here. This is where our, our target audience is. This is where they're not. This is where our competition in the marketplace is. This is where we're not. But I'm really looking at, it kind of goes back to the, um, conversation from earlier on that cultural tension point where you can spend a lot of time looking at what's happening in the world is to help inform this work and then the data behind that. So even pulling reports from Harvard or, or McKinsey and being able to use those sort of larger analytical landscapes um, to reflect like that those industry uh, specific gaps um, that they might be missing and then you know how effective those impact um, programs are working to date. But I would say um, the thing that a lot of people miss in this work is the being reading all the time and 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 having your pulse on data and knowing where things are going is just such a huge asset because unless you are a data data analytics company, like I said, odds are they have in-house um, you know for, at least at least with 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 my clients, they're not looking for me to do that research necessarily. Um, and I'm there to look at where, I mean, this goes back to the blank space, like what they're missing is more my job. I was inside. Um, I had many great mentors, uh, both that were corporate high end corporate executives, the chain and entrepreneurs. And they always said that they knew I was an entrepreneur, both sides. <laughs> it's kind of a personality thing. I'm a rule breaker. I like to come up with big ideas that seem like they're going to fail. I, you know, I want to push people into thinking bigger. I am never doing my job because I'm running around doing 10 other jobs. Like, you know, I would say that there is a personality that fits this. Um, that's for sure. And it's not an easy life at all. You have, you really have to be, um, willing to, you know, jump in, take risks, put yourself out there and, and really go after it. And you can imagine some of those years of my business um, growth were during a pandemic when everything was slowed down. Right. So you just have to keep 
focusing and know know exactly what you're working towards and keep going um, with all the perseverance in the world. So it's a lot of hard work and it doesn't end. Um, on the other side, I did really enjoy being like an intrapreneur as they now call it. They did, I didn't have those words when I was there. I was just like making a mess, but <laughs> you know, you can try and build something where you are. That's what I always did. I would say, let's pro solve for this problem. Or did you notice that this was happening and we're not doing anything about it? Or our consumers are asking for this. So I was always trying to come up with creative ideas and move the business forward from the inside. And that also helped me to sort of figure out where I was really good at, what I was really good at. And it helped the company to see where I could, you know, problem solve for them on the other side. To be honest, you can't do this work unless you are knowing your own purpose and your own why. And I, I, I can't stress that enough. And every little bit of my company and every single time I bring on a client and every decision I have to make is driven by that. In my life from, you know, who I'm spending time with to, um, you know, where I live and, and just, really trying to build legacy in what we do and thinking about like the little moments. I think that sometimes people think they don't have a lot of influence in the world because they're not like a YouTube, um, what is that? That, that weird thing where people like brush their hair and people <laughs> like, don't even get it. But you see what I mean? Like we don't I have, I don't even care about following. That's why I need to hire one of you guys to figure out my digital media strategy, but because at the end of the day, please don't underestimate like what being a good person and showing up like that it is like, it means a lot and your clients see it and your team sees it. And I just think that we all have to kind of be better people in order to move business into being better.